So I'm going to preface, preface this next problem with the fact that our last step, I want to make sure that this is in your notes, our last, last step will have identical, identical, meaning you look in the mirror and you see the same exact face looking back at you, identical expressions on both sides of the equal sign not equivalent, identical, on both sides of the equal. And I'm gonna put that not equivalent, not equivalent, we want identical. Okay, so here's a problem, let's see, we're gonna work with the more complicated side. I would definitely say that the left-hand side is more complicated than the right-hand side. I would also say going through my steps, we look to factor, add fractions, square binomial, create a monomial denominator. Well, look at that, add fractions. I've got two fractions here that I need to add together. Well, when we add fractions, we need a common denominator. So the first fraction is going to need one plus sine of alpha, that's an alpha symbol, one plus the sine of alpha. And the second fraction needs one minus the sine of alpha. One minus the sine of alpha. So our very first step would be what I just did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that. I got so darn excited there. Let's see, copy, and copy, and paste. There we go. So that's our first step. Our second step, I'm gonna write this all over one denominator. So that one denominator is one minus sine of alpha times one plus sine of alpha which is one minus sine squared of alpha because those are conjugates. Now the first, the first fraction, I don't like what I did here. Just really don't like that I can't see that original problem. Thank you for your patience. So that first numerator, I think I even said denominator right there, that first numerator is going to go here, and then we have a plus sign, and then the second numerator is going to go right here. So the first numerator, 1 times 1 plus sign. And the second numerator, one times one minus sine. And then I'm gonna simplify the numerator and the denominator for that matter because one minus sine squared is, you got it, cosine squared of alpha. And that's why we did all those problems in the previous lesson. We did, what, 50 of them? I know, I know it was rough. But that makes you stronger here. 1 plus sine plus 1 minus sine is simply 2 because the signs cancel out, right? And then step 4, and this is why we number our steps, so that if we need a little bit more room but we don't have it, we can go off to the side. And it's very clear, 1, 2, 3, and then there's step 4. Step 4 is going to be 2 times 1 over cosine squared of alpha. And then step 5 is 2 times secant squared of alpha, which is equal to two, I'm gonna do this in gray, two secant squared of alpha. They look identical, therefore, we have verified that we have an identity. The left-hand side is the same exact value as the right-hand side, we've proven that. So we didn't assume it, we proved it. Here's an, another verify. 
I think that you might be feeling a little bit comfortable, especially having done that assignment previous and the fact that we kind of did a little bit of this in the previous chapter. I think you might be comfortable. I'm hoping that you'll press pause and see if you can try this and then press play and check your answer or your work. I am going to take tangent squared plus one, that's I tan by the C, and I'm going to substitute in secant squared of X. And then cosine squared minus one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Well, if I subtract one from both sides, I'll have the cosine squared minus one, but then I have to subtract sine squared. So that's the same thing as negative sine squared of x. And then step two, I'm gonna take this secant squared and I'm gonna make it one over cosine squared times negative sine squared and then multiply across for our fractions, and we get negative sine squared of x over cosine squared. Now this is where you might get excited and say, ah, I'm done because that's negative tangent squared. However, we have step four. We have to make it look exactly like the right-hand side of the equation. So that's where I, I have that mirror image with an equal sign in my very last step. Put a little check mark and we're good to go. Now, you're thinking, well, what do I highlight? If I highlight my answer, what do I highlight? If you're gonna highlight your answer, this is actually your entire answer. So that right there would be your entire answer. So highlighting isn't really going to be necessary on this assignment. Let's try this, this next problem. And we just learn by kind of doing See if you can struggle a little bit with this problem. I'm definitely gonna work with the left-hand side of the equation. See what you can do and, and then check your answer with what I've got. I'm going to take tangent of x and I'm going to take, let me see how many problems I've got left. Oh yeah, I've got quite a few. Okay, I'm gonna take tangent of x and cotangent of x, and I'm gonna make them fractions. So step one will be to make tangent of x, sine of x over cosine of x, and I have a plus, and then I've got cotangent of x, which is cosine of x over sine of x. I'm going to create a common denominator so I'm going to multiply the first fraction by sine over sine, sine over sine. So that's going to give us sine squared over sine of x cosine of x plus, second one I'm going to multiply by cosine over cosine, which is cosine squared of x over sine of x, cosine of x. And you can probably see it, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. We're gonna have that common denominator, sine of x, cosine of x. So I rewrite it, just to be very clear, I rewrote the two fractions as one fraction. And then I'm gonna make that one over sine of x, cosine of x, which can be separated out to be one over sine of x times one over cosine of x, which is cosecant of x. I love that I did this backwards. Cosecant of x times secant of x, which is not the mirror image of what we've got. So I'm going to take one last step and I'm going to use the, what would it be? I guess it would be the commutative property. 
I'm going to use the commutative property. So A times B is equal to B times A, right? So that's going to be secant of X times cosecant of X is equal to secant of X times cosecant of X. Check. Check, check. And that's going to conclude these examples. We'll do a few more. That's what's coming. So I definitely do address some of those other skills in the next video that are so crucial to verifying these identities.